Okay, so thank you everybody that's joining this morning um, for this stream. If you wanted to paint along, I did have the reference photo and the line sketch of this little chick down in the description below, but you can always just watch the stream and then go ahead and paint it afterwards um, if you've missed that. Um, yeah, everything that I'm going to be using will be down in the description below, but I'm just going to kind of get right into it and um, if you guys don't mind liking the video that does help it out too and it helps let YouTube know that people like watching my stuff so that would be great too. Um, okay Lisa says yes uh, we do have audio and everything looks good. Okay so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Now I've got two of my favorite brushes here which is my number four silver black velvet and my number six Princeton round. And I like these, um, I used to use the Princeton rounds a lot, but I've sort of decided I like the silver black velvets a little bit better because they have a little bit more of a nicer point to them. So if you're trying to get some fur detail and things like that, um, then this is the brush that I tend to go to. And with Easter coming up, I thought doing a cute little chick would be a nice idea and maybe something that we could get done within, you know, an hour because I'm just trying out this live stream. If you guys end up liking this, then please let me know either in the chat or down in the comments below, and I will certainly um, do more for you. Okay, so looking at my reference photo, we've got a, a lot of yellows going on, a lot of oranges going on. So I think we're going to start with the main body, and we'll go in with the yellows, and I'm going to pick um, Azo Yellow to start because our yellows are pretty cool looking. And I'm using my M. Graham watercolors here, but you can use whatever ones that you have. And also, I'm not used to having a chat up, so if I miss your comment or if I miss your question um, right away, please, you know, say it again, or I will try to remind myself to keep looking at the chat as I'm going. So I'm going to try to water this down, because M. Graham paints are quite um, punchy. They have a lot of color in them. So I'm just going to start laying some color down. And I'm going to lay sort of like a flat color in for most of it. Where I see, you know, there's little hairs coming off, I'm going to do little, little lines, little strokes. Um, I lightened my sketch a little bit beforehand, but honestly... I don't mind if some of the graphite lines um, show through. So the plan is we're pretty much going to lay down most of our colors and then we'll go through and add our details, um, you know, make them look a little more realistic. And you can add as much or as little as you want. Now where it gets lighter over here, I'm just dipping my brush in and running it off just to get a little bit less pigment on my brush. And I'm just gonna fill in these base areas here. And don't stress about this. Um, if your colors aren't looking exactly right or if it's not coming out um, how you like, you know, there's no rules with art. Just have fun. So it starts getting a little bit darker down here. So I'm going to use the pigment a little more pigmented on my brush. And then I'll start to go in and sort of get rid of some and wash it out to create that lighter wash. And we can always go on top with some uh, titanium white uh, gouache, you know, to get some really bright highlights if we want to do that. So now in here, it's 
a little more darker of yellow, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit more pigment, um, especially around the eye. And then we'll warm it up here a little bit. And the reason I'm choosing to go in wet on dry is because I want this to dry fairly quickly so that we can go on top and do more of our details. Whereas if I were to wet the little chick first and then put our colors in, it would take a lot longer to dry. You could always go in with a heat tool or a hair dryer, um, something like that, but you know, this works for me because usually by the time I go back, to do some uh, details then it's pretty dry okay so I'm gonna add just a little bit of this new gamboge which is a little warmer of a yellow and I'm just gonna mix that in with my azo yellow and we're gonna start adding that in here and if we notice it's a little too dark just run your brush into the jar of water there and I'm sort of trying to look at where the fur direction is going to. So I'm trying to follow that, but at this point that's not as important. Okay, and I'm gonna go back in with that light as a yellow and just sort of fill in the rest of the areas and I'm going to let it mix together if it mixes. I'm just going to do some little flickies to kind of uh, get that little fur texture started going into our other area. But again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and there's a little bit of a darker area down here. So I'm going to mix some yellow ochre in there just to get sort of a little bit of a brown in with our yellow. And we're just going to mix this all together. If you don't have yellow ochre, you could certainly use the new gamboge as well. And we're going to mix that up and I'm going to get rid of just a little bit. And we're going to start laying that in. That's still a little dark, so we'll get rid of a little bit more. Hi, haters art. Thank you for joining the live stream. It's nice to see you. Just gonna water this down a little bit more. And I'm just gonna kinda go along the bottom of them here where there would be a little bit of a shadow coming as well. Just gonna bring that color up here a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the same color 
just to go around the eye. So his eye is pretty black in the reference photo, but there's a hint of like this browny, orangey yellow right around the, the eye. So I'm gonna get that in now. Now, depending how small you've made your sketch, and if your brush doesn't come to a really nice point like this, it might be a little more difficult for you to get that in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off. So while I let some of this dry, I think I'm gonna start working on his beak and his little legs. So we wanna make an orange, but it's not just an orange that we're looking for. It's a little more of a ready orange. So if you don't have orange on your palette, you can go ahead and mix like a warm yellow and a warm red together. But since I have orange, I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I'm gonna mix a little bit. So this is Azo orange and I'm gonna mix a little bit of um, Scarlet Pyrrole, which is a really nice warm red. I'm gonna get some more of that orange in there. And this is gonna make a really nice deep orange. And then I'm gonna get just some regular orange. And for a lighter color, I'm gonna add a little bit of our new gamboge in with that as well. So we sort of have two different oranges that we can pick from here. So I'm gonna go in with our lighter orange first. And I'm gonna get a little bit off the brush. And I'm just gonna start filling in his beak here. And we'll come back in with our darker orange after. And then I'm just gonna take the tip of this and do just slight little lines, just going outside. So it looks like there's a little bit of texture there, maybe some dots. Um, in the reference photo, I can see there's some dots, just some little texture going on between his uh, fur or feathers. Is it feathers? I guess it would be feathers um, and his beak. I'm so used to doing fur, so if I call it fur, we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> okay, so we'll get that in, and I'm gonna do the same thing with his little feet. Now I'm just gonna create a couple little lines because the hair kind of does go over top of his little feet there. And I am trying to paint a little bit quickly here so that we're not here for hours doing this. So if I go outside of the lines, it's fine. It's no big deal. If you want to be a little more careful and a little more, you know, watch what you're doing, then do that. Now to start creating some of our highlights, what I'm going to do is tap off the brush so it's not got a lot of water on it. And I'm just going to go where I see those highlights and sort of try to take some pigment off. I like doing it this way because it sort of gives the pigment a couple of seconds to start staining the paper and then you can always come with, you know, a Kleenex or whatever and clean that up. But it gives it enough time to sort of stain the paper a little bit. Um, so you still get a little bit of color in there, but you also can lighten the area up too. Okay. And we'll go on and do the same with this one. And again, when I get close to that fur, I'm gonna do the little flickies towards the fur so that it looks like the fur is coming on top of his feet.
Now, if you missed this live stream and you want me to do more, please let me know either uh, down in the comments below. And if there's, you know, certain times that would work better for you, I would love if you would um, put the day and the times down below. And then I'll know for the next time I'd like to do a live stream, I can try to, you know, maybe work around those times if I'm able to. Okay, so again, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to take up a couple little highlights if I can. So I'm getting my brush almost completely dry and just dragging it across the paper. Now you could just avoid these areas if you want, or you could, you know, leave them empty and then glaze over them with another color after, but I like doing this. Because it almost automatically gives me like a lighter version of the color right away. And then we can always go on top afterwards. Okay, so now I'm going to take that darker color that we had, and this is pretty much dry up here now. And I'm just going to start focusing where I see the shadows now. So his underside of the beak is sort of in shadow, so we're going to start putting that in. And there's a little shadow here under his nostril. And I'm gonna start adding in just a little bit here. It's still a little wet, but it, uh, as long as you have more paint and not more water, you won't get those blooms when we're putting it in. And I'm just going to go over top of the areas that are a little more dark anyway. So those are pretty much dry by now. So we're sort of doing a little bit wet on dry, a little bit wet on wet. You pick whichever one you like best. I like to do a little bit of both to get some variety in there. We can always come back afterwards and darken things up. So that's starting to look like beak and a feet. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go in and start working on some details within our little chick here. So his uh, feathers, I guess, we're gonna start calling them feathers. So the colors that we use, we want darker versions of them now so that we can go in and start putting in some details. So I'm gonna get some of that Azo yellow again. And I'm gonna put a little bit of new gamboge in there as well. Just so we have sort of like this golden color. And then I'm gonna get and I might even throw in around his eye I'm seeing just a tiny little bit of green in there. So I'm gonna grab some sap green and just throw that in as well, just to get a little bit more of a greeny yellow. And that's what we're gonna start putting in around his eye. Now this is the fun part because you can do um, as much detail as you want or as little detail as you want. But basically, if you can get a brush that will come to a nice point like this, we're just gonna do some flicks. So we're just gonna just make little flicks like this, and that's going to create the hair texture, fur, feather, whatever you're doing. You just want to make sure that you're looking what direction that it's going in. And, you know, 
the overall color. And color's not super important as long as you have something that's close enough, that's usually good enough. Now a lot of these feathers around his face are so small, I'm just doing little dots even. Now this is a little bit more golden here, so I'm gonna pick up some of that golden color. And since we have that on our brush, we'll use it back here. Hi, Farouk LHR official. I apologize if I didn't pronounce your name right. Hi and welcome. Okay, so the fur here, or the hair, I keep calling it fur, but it's hair, it sort of changes directions a lot. So I'm sort of just making like random strokes this way, then this way, you know, just to get um, a feel for it. And it starts off smaller, and then as we get more towards the outside of our little chick, they get a little bit longer. So I'm just trying to imitate that. And we've got some of this golden -y color here. Now, I imagine all this little detail might be hard for you to see on this camera. So if you can't see it from a few feet away, it probably doesn't need to be there. A lot of people think you need to add so much detail for something to look realistic, but honestly, the average person is going to be looking at your art from, you know, two or three feet away, or even if you're holding it, you know, you're not holding it right up against your face. So if you can't see that detail, you know, by sitting back and looking at it, it probably doesn't need to be there. So I'm just doing little flicks and I don't want every little hair in there as well. I just want a general idea of the hair or the fur, whatever you're doing and what direction it's going in. So that's what you see me doing. I'm just trying to make quick random strokes. And depending how big, you know, of a picture that you're doing, this can be quite time consuming. So that's why I try to just, you know, get the general idea. If you want to go for super hyper realistic, then, you know, you could be doing this for hours and hours just on one, one area trying to get that look that you want. Okay, so it starts getting a little more of that cool color. So I'm gonna go back in with the Azo Yellow. Get some of that, get it a little watered down. And I'm gonna continue with that up here. And I find when I'm doing quick little strokes like this too, the, the higher up to the end of the brush I can be, the better, because I have a little bit more control And I'm going to take this color, start working it down here. Okay, and I'm going to go back into that sort of greeny yellow that we created. Now I'm being a little more careful around here just because this is a smaller area. And I want the little spots that I'm doing to be nice and small. And 
And then as this area out here gets lighter, we don't need as much texture there. So I'm just going to do, you know, even less random spots. And that's going to give sort of the illusion that the hair is getting lighter. If you want to create some of that fluff, you just take some of the color and just go outside of your lines. Now this is probably so light, it's hard for you to see, but I'm pulling it out a little bit further than I'm making the strokes inside for the, for the feathers. And it's going to create sort of like a fluff type look. And again, just watching what direction the feathers are going in. Now here, they're sort of like, it's a little bit lighter, then a little bit darker, and then a little bit lighter again. So I'm gonna put in this darker strip first. And this is a little bit longer, so I'm doing longer strokes as well. And I'm making them a little bit random then it sort of starts connecting down here. And then I'm just gonna get some of that color off my brush. And we're gonna work it while it's a little bit lighter just to create some of those lighter ones. And again, I'm just going outside of my sketch just to create some of those like wispy little hairs going off of him. And down here as well. And if you crisscross your lines a little bit, um, it'll make it, you know, a little more realistic looking as well. I'm gonna get a little more of that yellow, the warm yellow in there just to add a little bit of variety here where the darker patches. And I see just some spots here where it's a little bit warmer, I'm starting to get that in. And I hope you can see as we start to get it in, you start to build up a little bit of texture and you get more of that impression of it. And we're doing this fairly quickly, you know. Okay, and I just wanna make this a little bit lighter. So again, I'm just dipping my brush, running it on the side and getting some of those off just to make it a little bit lighter. And as you can see, I'm not filling in every space. I'm leaving, it's not technically white because we did put a wash of our lighter color down, but it looks like little highlights in between the, ha the hairs because we're going over top with a darker color. Now I really want this area to pop a little bit more, so I'm just gonna take some more of that warmer color. And we're gonna start just adding a little bit more in here, just for some extra darkness. And I'm not going over all of this area again, I'm just gonna focus it sort of right here. Because this is sort of where, you know, the main part of the bird is. 
and the feathers are changing directions. Okay, I'll get some of this down here. Okay, so I like how that's looking so far. Now we'll go in and work on the darker feathers around here. So again, I'm gonna go in with that yellow ochre and sort of work it in with some lemon yellow. Some yellow ochre, sort of to get like a little bit of a brownie yellow. And I'm gonna start putting this, you know, on his back end here where some of the shadows are and underneath and a little bit around here. Now here where I want some of those longer feathers to stick out, I'm just doing some longer brush strokes and I'm sort of taking my time because I want these to look, you know, like they're meant to come out. And then as I get in, I kind of start going a little bit faster, a little more random because you don't want it all to look perfect. go up here just a little bit because I see this color just coming up here a little. Okay, and then we're gonna go under. And I'm taking it into the light area too a little bit because you wanna show that the feathers sort of overlap each other. So you do want some of that dark color going into the light color a little bit, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. <laughs> I've been really enjoying making um, the tutorials on my channel that I've been doing. And you know, normally I, I do mostly real time and I'm sort of talking through what I'm doing. So I figure if I'm doing it, you know, maybe I'd like to try doing some live streams and then, you know, I can maybe chat with you guys at the same time but it's hard to pick times where um, everybody's available, right? So. So I'm just sort of randomly putting a couple little strokes in here where I see some shadows and I'm sort of trying to curve them as well because the hair in here is a little bit curvy. And uh, we just need a little bit more color difference with some of the colors in here. Just to show that there's variation and uh, different layers of the feathers on top of each other. But again, we don't wanna cover all the layers that we've done previously. And I might even put a little bit of this color just between the eye and his beak. Just again for variation in color and to show that there is some depth in some of these places. Okay, 
Okay. So I like how that's coming out. And I think I'm going to go back in to his little feet and just darken up. I'm just adding a little bit more of that Azo orange to our um, orange and scarlet pyrrole mix. And I might add, no, uh, might add just a hint of um, neutral tint just to darken it up, make it more of like a little gray orange because I can see some gray in the orange in the back here. So now that this is pretty much mostly dry, I'm just gonna put this in the spots where it's a little bit darker. And this is going to start helping to create some depth to show that these legs are underneath of him. These little feet are under him and that there's shadows in there and structure. Now you could go darker if you want. Um, I believe in the reference photo it looks a little bit darker, but I want him to look, you know, light and fluffy. And so sometimes I'll choose not to make my my shadows as dark as they can. Normally, if you've watched any of my tutorials, you'll know I love to bump up the shadows and the lights just to really get the contrast in there good. And it really helps make your work look a little more realistic. But sometimes when I want something fun and I want it to look, you know, fluffy and cute. Sometimes I'll choose to not go as dark or to change color or something like that. So now if I want to um, sort of let that blend out a little bit better so that there's not such a hard shadow, again, you can go in with your nice damp brush and just go along the edge and pick up some of that color. And it creates just a little bit nicer of a transition between the two colors. You want to be careful with this because if you have too much water on your brush, you can create a bloom and that's where the water will drop and all of a sudden you'll see like that cauliflower look where it just creates um, little veins in your paint. And if you like that look, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to avoid it, then it's all about your water control. How much water you have on your brush versus how much paint versus how wet your paper is. And you know, if it happens, it's no big deal. You're just adding texture to your art. That's free texture <laughs> to your painting. So don't worry about it. Okay. So I like that. And I'm just gonna go in a little bit more on his beak, just right under where his two little bottom beak and his top beak come together. And under this little nose hole, I guess it is. And then I'm just gonna do a couple little, just a couple little dots where the hair and the beak meet. And I'm just looking sort of where the main shadows are on the beak and I'm just doing a little bit of dots, you know, maybe a line just to show, again, some variation, that there is some light hitting in some places, some shadow in other places. And I might even bring this color just in here a tiny bit. And just over here, because there's sort of like a little dark spot right here and we'll just get that in okay and I think what I'm gonna do is put his little eye in next so I'm just gonna go right in with my lamp black and as you can see I've got the paint pretty thick on here because I don't want it to run outside of the eye 
I want it to be where I want it, and I want it to be dark. So I'm getting it dark and thick. And on our reference photo, there's no highlight in his eye, but we could always go and create one. So let's say maybe we want a little tiny highlight, right? I don't know where, maybe there. And then if we don't like it, we can always paint over it. But I find sometimes if you can add a little highlight in the eye, it sort of brings a little bit more light to it. A little more life, even. Oh, mm. I went over just a little bit, so I'm just gonna take some Kleenex, just try to lift that up. It's such a small area. There, so just a little tiny dot for a highlight. Now, I feel like we're almost done, but I don't want our chick just floating in the air. So in our reference photo, he's standing on like a wood table or wood something like a bench, um, but I want him to feel, you know, grounded. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of grass under him and I think I'm gonna start with our sap green. It's a really nice warm green. And what I'm gonna do first, because I want this to be um, a little more loose, I'm gonna wet the area first and then I'll tap in our sap green so that we sort of have some variation between our bird and the background. So I'm just getting clean water And I'm just gonna wet the paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect there. I just basically want around his feet, you know, where the, the grass is gonna sort of go and we're just gonna let it spread out and do its thing. Now, I probably would have hit this with the heat tool first, just to make sure that everything's nice and dry but if we get some bleeding, whatever, it's no big deal. And when you're doing a wet on wet background, you wanna make sure your paper's wet, it's shiny, but that there's no puddles. Now this paper I find does dry fairly quickly versus if you were using like arches uh, paper or something like that. So you may need to take that into consideration whether you would like to, you know, make sure it's pretty dry before you start doing this or not. There. So I just, you know, have a little area here where it's fairly wet. And then I'm just gonna start going in with our sap green. Now, because the area is wet, I can go in, you know, pretty thick and I'm just gonna start tapping that in. So the wetter our sap green is, the more it's gonna bleed out, which is sort of what I want. And the drier the sap green, the less it would bleed out. Now again, I'm doing this fairly quickly, so you could take your time, really get around his little legs and feet nicely, but I'm trying to get this done fairly quickly for you guys. And you can see how the edges just bleed out really nicely. I love doing the, the wet on wet for my backgrounds. And I can go through and sort of get up to any little edges that I've missed on his feet. If I've gone over his feet a little bit, no big deal. We'll just pretend that's grass that's gone over his feet. Okay. And I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit. 
and blend it out a little bit here too. So we get sort of a, you know, a grounded look for our little guy. And I'm just gonna tap a little bit more in because I want it to be darkest around his feet. And I might even take a little bit of my deep sap green here. And I'm gonna mix that in with the sap green. And I'm just gonna draw. And once this starts drying, if you want it to even go in and to create some little, you know, grass textures like this, you could absolutely do that. There. So I think he's just about done. Just for a quick, easy little Easter chick. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this live stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. And um, as always, I will see you in the next video.